walls of an ancient castle, the steeples of a majestic church, a town hall and tower with a Swiss clock, a 16th century wooden church, wide streets with medieval houses, ancient paving stones and the villas of noble gentry, talented citizens, a plasticine cartoon about the city, and tasty Galician paluszki or potato fingers. Our city for the weekend is Chortkiv. As usual, the town's people will talk about their native city. Our guide will be Irina Brunda, a local historian and professional photographer. Hi, my name is Irina and I will be your guide in our wonderful city. The city has a rather unusual name and we want to find out the origin of Chortkiv. Despite all the mysticism, the name of the city of Chortkiv has completely historical reasoning behind it. In 1522, Chortkiv received the status of a city in German or Teutonic law. After that, Jerzy Chertkovsky became the first owner of the city. And then castles, churches and other shrines were built and the city developed right up to the present time. All tourists usually begin their acquaintance with the city from Chortkiv Castle. So let's go to the Castle Hill. We are on the territory of Chortkiv Castle, or Golski Castle, which was built before the 16th century, and it got its stone look after 1610. In its day, it was the residence of Pasha during the Turkish rule. Later on, after certain historical events, the castle became a property of the Golski family's magnates, and then the Pototsky family. The shape of Chortkiv Castle is that of an irregular pentagon and it's called the Podilian Pentagon. In addition to the walls, which are completely preserved along the perimeter, two corner towers remain. The walls and towers have rows of loopholes for cross-firing from all types of firearms. Today we have the opportunity to see only the remains of the castle, but we hope that it keeps quiet a few secrets. There are legends that, like in every castle, there's a ghost here. Some say that this is a young man, others believe that this is the the legendary Maria Mohilyanka, who buried some treasures somewhere in Chortkiv. Perhaps they are somewhere here, under our feet. Let's go and see what the mysterious Chortkiv castle has preserved for us. Two towers have been preserved here to this day. The southwestern tower is pentahedral with two tires and a basement. The northwest is tetrahedral with its one tire and basement. During the castle's reconstruction, after losing its defense significance, the towers were turned into rizalids of the courtyard. The castle ruins have been mothballed. If tourists want to come to Chortkiv, they are welcome to do so. Locals will tell you the phone number of a guide, who will give you a tour and will show you everything. Welcome to the glorious city of Chortkiv in western Ukraine. This is Chortkiv's calling card, a unique clock tower, which is almost 100 years old. The clock tower can be called the heart of the city. It's located in the center of Chortkiv. This unique architectural structure was built at the beginning of the 20th century at the initiative of the mayor of Chortkiv, Ludwig Noss. The clock tower consists of a traditional quadrangular tower crowned with a sharp spire. A clock made by the famous Swiss company Aosta is installed on the town hall. It's here that the roads of all the city's main routes converge. Let's go further and get acquainted with the city. Chortkiv is a city with an interesting history and there are many architectural monuments that are definitely worth visiting. Local guides can offer several hiking trails, for example a city tour or you can see the sacred buildings in the city. The Jewish heritage of Chortkiv will also be interesting. It is worth paying attention to the buildings built during the reign of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Therefore, let's visit one of the tourist sites along the sacred Chortkiv route. In the very center of Chortkiv, we can see the Church of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which will soon be 500 years old. It's unique, as it was erected without a single nail. At present, this is a partially rebuilt structure, which still retains its home-style format. It has preserved some of its sacred forms and invites us to come inside. So, let's go! 
The temple is located on Cerkovna Street 12. This is the oldest church in Podilia. This building is an example of the Podilian school of folk wooden architecture. The church, like the bell tower, is an architectural monument of national importance. Construction of the church began in 1581 and lasted for three years, until 1584. The construction of this shrine was initiated by artisans from Chortkiv, Mykola Drachuk and Gabriel Juravel. It was destroyed during Turkish Tatar raids, but rebuilt in 1635. The church was built crosswise in the form of a cross. It was built out of oak beams, which are laid out in the base, and by the way, the base is built without nails on wooden pegs. Inside the church there is an old iconostasis, which has been preserved and was restored at the end of 1980s. The iconostasis is painted on the wood. Some of the paintings are preserved in their original form. The temple has side altars with original carvings, left and right. How are they original? They are made with surgical precision, with a very small chiseling. The temple was destroyed at different times, but thankfully it wasn't completely destroyed. There are three ancient crypts of the priests in the altar who served in this place of worship. In such a worshipful place, the most important thing for us is prayer. Of course, we invite everyone to visit us not only to admire the Church, but to say prayers of request, as we have been doing since those glorious times of hetmans and Cossacks. Of course, Chortkiv can be attractive for tourists not only thanks to interesting tourist sites. Travelers have the opportunity to meet talented citizens. Here, for example, items made by Alessia Tokar can be found in many of the city's souvenir shops. We had a great opportunity to get acquainted with this craftswoman. It all began when her father decided to buy some beehives and asked his daughter to help him. My work gives me great pleasure. At first, I had surplus of wax and some melted wax. I thought, wait, candles are made from this wax. I started making candles, made them for myself, presented them to my sister and to my parents. Someone saw them and my friends asked me to make some of them. That's how my story with candles began. Then I read that soap with honey is very beneficial, but I didn't have the time. It was like a dream. A little later I started making soap. First for my family and now we are not buying ordinary soap, because one with honey softens the skin, moisturizes and cleans as well. And then I read about the Florentine sachet, which is made on the basis of beeswax, and became very interested. You know, everything related to beekeeping products gets my interest. It turns out that this is made from ordinary beeswax, essential oils and decorative aromatic components. I also tried it, and I really liked it. At today's masterclass I will show you how to make the so-called Florentine sachet on the basis of beeswax. For the masterclass I will conduct today, how to make beeswax sachets, first we take the usual beeswax, which I peeled and melted twice earlier on. It's ready now to make a candle out of it, or a sachet, or even to add it to cosmetics, to make some kind of cosmetic products. First the wax should be melted. I do this in water bath, grind it, put it on a small fire and the wax melts. When it has melted, I take a mold, add essential oils to the melted wax, lavender, for example. I have such a device to hang it. I also use a cocktail tube. In a moment, while the wax is still liquid, I will insert 
a cocktail tube and after a while I will put it out. And a beautiful neat hoe is made in which you can stick the lace and hang it where you need to. I enjoy working with honey and wax. The smell is pleasant and everything is pleasant to touch. I have molds made by myself using food-grade silicon. I have the soap that I made, came up with an idea, a design and I put everything into practice. So these are my original works. Chortkiv is a hospitable city. Local citizens will show you everything with pleasure. The city is small, so all the unique historical sites are located almost nearby. Well, we'll continue to get acquainted with the city in the next program. After all, there are still so many interesting things to see. The majestic church of St. Stanislav, the city hall, old paving stones, talented musicians, a cartoon about the city and delicious local cuisine. Travel around Ukraine, discover new cities and talk about them with the whole world. Let every journey be bright and unforgettable.